Hi there, Luke here with another video. For those of you unfamiliar with our channel, my husband Tyler and I make weekly travel videos where we document our experiences since moving from North America to the UK. If you caught our last video, you'll know that we, at this point, had just finished the portion of our Scotland trip where we had visited the highlands town of Ullapool and then had taken a ferry to the Isle of Lewis and Harris, which if you didn't get the chance to see that video, I highly encourage you to check out because I would say that Isle of Lewis and Harris was probably our favorite island that we visited in Scotland on this particular trip. Picking up where we left off in that last video, we woke up in the morning on the Isle of Harris and took a ferry to the Isle of Skye. I have to say we really lucked out when it came to weather on our ferry journeys because like the ferry journey that we did to the Isle of Lewis and Harris, this ferry journey leaving the Isle of Lewis and Harris was also really beautiful and very scenic. Once we disembarked the ferry, we headed straight to our first attraction of the day, which is a big one. This is the very famous Isle of Skye hike called Old Man of Store. This hike is quite famous because of its unique rock formations and really makes a beautiful scenic introduction as well as a highlight of the Isle of Skye. Let's just say Isle of Skye is famous for a reason and this was a really, really nice introduction to the island. Cannot be missed. After we were done the hike, we got back in our car and just enjoyed some scenic driving around the island. We were really pinching ourselves at how beautiful the weather was and how many pretty beautiful things we were able to see and experience on this particular drive. We decided to head to the cute fishing village of Elgol, which is a really nice spot to visit if you like water and mountain views. The water was really clear here and we just loved how beautiful and interesting the views were at this particular location. This is also a nice spot to do a boat trip, particularly from what we read and heard. There's a particular boat trip that you can do to a lake called Lach Korushk, but unfortunately for us, we were there on a bank holiday weekend, so it was sold out. So we did not get to do this particular boat trip, but even still, we had a great time just walking around the pier, walking around some of the rocky pebble beach area that is here, and just appreciating the different views and vantage points that you can get on this beautiful day that we had. So it was still worth it to us, even if you can't get a boat trip. But if you are gonna visit, then maybe look into it a bit farther in advance than we did, because it was such a beautiful day. I imagine that the boat trip would have been a phenomenal experience as well. After a long day of hiking and driving, we decided that we were ready to relax for the rest of the day, and we headed to the other side of the island where we stayed at a campsite called Camus Moor, where we were staying for the next few days. The following morning, we went to one of the other famous attractions of the Isle of Skye, which is the Fairy Pools. If you aren't familiar with the fairy pools of the Isle of Skye, basically the fairy pools are a series of small waterfalls and pools that are formed by a running stream. The area around the pools is also really quite beautiful and it is surrounded by the Scottish mountains in all directions. So it is really quite a special experience to kind of walk around and experience these views for yourself. I feel like pictures and videos don't do them justice. It was a really nice, peaceful experience to start off our morning.
Our next stop after the fairy pools would be what I would personally call a bit of a hidden gem on the Isle of Skye. It's not something that I heard a ton about, but was something that I really personally enjoyed doing. And that was a hike to the Brothers Point. This is a really idyllic, peaceful hike where you walk through some countryside. Of course, it's Scotland, so you see sheep and you just enjoy walking through the countryside, walking along the coast and getting views of these sea cliffs. I would say that the visit and the hike are absolutely worth it for the views that you get and also a chance to get away from all of the tourists. So if you like to kind of do your own thing and experience nature more on your own, away from lots and lots of other people, then this might be a good option on the Isle of Skye. Our final stop of the day was to a really scenic spot of the island called the Kerrang. And this is a really beautiful area that has lots of hiking options. In our particular case, we had contemplated doing one of the various hikes here, but we were pretty tired at this point and instead we decided for an easy visit to a viewpoint and we found that the drive itself was quite scenic and has lots of beautiful switchbacks if you enjoy scenic drives. The next day, we woke up and proceeded to head to Neist Point, which is where you can access the Neist Point Lighthouse and the peninsula that's here. We followed this up with a visit to Dunvegan Castle and Gardens. Dunvegan Castle is the oldest continuously inhabited castle in all of Scotland and is the ancestral home of the chiefs of the MacLeod clan for the past 800 years. We enjoyed walking around the beautiful castle gardens, taking in the views of the castle as well as the surrounding area. After exploring the castle grounds a bit more, we decided to head back to our campground and grab some beers and headed down to a nearby beach and just enjoyed sitting by the water and unwinding after an eventful day of sightseeing. The next morning, we got in our car and made our way off of the Isle of Skye, headed towards the mainland again. So we made our way across the bridge and headed to Oban, where we were going to stay that night. But we did make some stops along the way. One of the first stops we did was heading to the Alien Donan Castle, which is one of the more iconic and famous castles of Scotland. After this, we continued driving on quite a pretty route and we headed to our next stop, which was Glenfinnan Viaduct. And this is quite a popular spot to visit, especially for people who are Harry Potter fans, because this particular viaduct was featured in the movies. This is one of the scenic shots that they got of the train that the students took to Hogwarts. And we found the walk getting here and getting back was quite peaceful and nice to enjoy. That night we spent the night in our Airbnb in Oban and then we woke up the next day to do a bit of exploring of Oban itself. So the spots that we hit up in Oban included McCaig's Tower and Battery Hill. The tower dates back to 1897 and it has a nice garden as well as panoramic views over the city.
The following day, we headed out on a hike in the Lost Valley near Glencoe. The hike here offered amazing views of the Scottish mountains and was definitely a highlight of our time there. That is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a like, comment, and subscribe. I read every comment and I really appreciate all of the feedback that we get on these videos. So definitely continue to give us your feedback. We love hearing from you. In our next video, we'll be heading to some of the Inner Hebrides Islands. So like I said, the Isle of Mall, as well as the Isle of Isla. And then we'll also head to another island that's not one of the Inner Hebrides, but is also worth seeing, and that is the Isle of Arran. So be sure not to miss it. I'll see you at the next video. Bye.